<laughs> hey, it's Kevin and Fred. Do you have a referral for us here in Phoenix? There are 30,000 agents here that you could send them to. Why us? Well, for one thing, we'll keep you updated and you'll never have to track down your commission. We'll also make you look really good to your client. And best of all, it helps us keep all this content free. So go to kevinandfred.com slash referral to make the introduction. We'll take great care of them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. Uh, and today, my guest on the Kevin and Fred show is my friend Dave Savage. Dave, how are you doing, my man? I'm doing good, brother. It is good to be here and finally get to be a guest on your show. I can't wait. Yeah, I'm glad we could finally, uh, I guess it all it took was a, was a worldwide pandemic for us to be able to slow down and get our calendars to coordinate. So I'm glad we finally got the chance to do this, man. It, it is. It, my calendar, you know, I'm traveling less than ever and it seems like it would be more open than ever, but we're, we're managing to fill that calendar up. I'm, I'm busy as ever. Right. You always, you, I, I forget the law or the, you know, the person that's named after, but like, you're always going to fill that calendar, right? No matter what, what, what you have. Um, yeah. We're not on planes anymore, but we're definitely filling the calendar. No doubt about it. Uh, so super grateful. I, I know you're super busy. Um, you know, for, for the few people that don't know, Dave and I got connected from a very good mutual friend of ours, Todd Booksman, who's been a, who's also been a guest here on the podcast in the, in the past. And um, you know, I remember, you know, Todd said, you know, just said, you, you should meet this guy and, you know, connected us and you and I hit it off right, right away. So you run a company called Mortgage Coach, which I want to talk about. Um, and you got your hands in a few other things, which I would love to talk about as well, because I love what you're doing in the, in the, it's still real estate, right? But on the mortgage side of, of the industry, you've got some really cool things going on. So I'm hoping we can talk about that today and kind of talk about your business journey as an entrepreneur and whatnot as well. Yeah, no, that, that sounds fun. I, I like the way you do interviews and I'm looking forward to just uh, you getting to know me a little bit more and me getting to know you and your community better. Right on. Well, hey, why don't we start with this, Dave? So tell us, um, if I was to ask you, like if I ran into you in a, in, in, literally in an elevator and said, hey, my name's Kevin, you said your name is Dave, and I said, what do you do? Well, how would you respond to that? How do you answer that question? God, well, it depends on what day, what elevator, <laughs> and what you, and who you are. But I, I used to say I was a serial entrepreneur because I've done a lot of startups and technology with Mortgage Coach and other startups. I, you know, that term is so overused and like, what does that mean? And, you know, sometimes I say I'm a technology entrepreneur. Uh, if, you know, you are obviously a business, I might say, hey, I'm a SaaS technology entrepreneur. But today is Mortgage Coach is my, my number one, well, it's my only major investment and the company that I it was my first startup 20 years ago. It, it is just, we are reshaping how people get into debt in America and helping people that when they get a mortgage, which for most families is the most strategic decision they'll ever make, try to make that decision with more clarity and, and helping them uh, make a decision that helps them build wealth with real estate. Now that was obviously the whole one minute elevator pitch, but something around, if you were, you know, just someone that looked like, hey, I'm a homeowner, I would, I would just talk about, hey, we help families uh, build wealth with real estate faster by making smarter mortgage decisions. It's a company called Mortgage Coach. Dude, you just said something that blew my mind. I instantly grabbed for my, reached for my, actually my win by noon planner. Um, so I could write that down. We are uh, reshaping how people get into debt with their mortgage. I think you said that or some version of that. Um, that is a cool way. Tell me more about that. Like, what do you mean when you say you help them uh, get into debt and reach, or I should say reshape how they get into debt. Well, when I founded mortgage coach 20 years ago, it was definitely to create a competitive advantage. You know, every loan officer out there quotes rates, monthly payment, cash to close interest rate. Those are the three data points. And I call that the transactional triangle. Uh, but where all the differentiation and really all the value comes is when you, you start to look at the mortgage decision beyond that. So like, what, what is the cost of loan over three years and five years? And, and, and let's compare different mortgage strategies. Like if I'm buying a home and I'm a first time home buyer, look at that strategically. And then, and then we call it the advice star. The other part of it is every time I get into debt, I wanna be able to get out of debt. And I, and I wanna optimize that investment. So, so always look for strategies to invest the difference and pay off your mortgage faster invest, you know, like, let's say I was doing a refi and I was going to save $300 a month. Should I invest that 300 in paying my mortgage off faster? How much interest would I save? How much faster would I pay it off? Should I put it in an offset account with a financial planner 
that I'm going to use to buy more real estate. Like to me, it's, it's going beyond the transaction and it's, it's helping people make more informed decisions. But at the end of the day, you know, we are in mortgage, we service the housing industry and we want people to make better decisions that help them build wealth through real estate. So there's a little more color around that. That's awesome. I love that. Where did you get the idea for this or what was the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, what was the inspiration for starting a company that helped people do that? Well, I mean, when I got in the mortgage business, you know, it was a long time ago, you know, it was 30 years ago. I grew up in Huntington beach. I got in, started in the mortgage when I was like 25 ish kind of grew up in that punk rock community. So I, I had, you know, like short hair. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't have tattoos. I didn't look like a punker, but I was, I liked punk rock music. And so I immediately gravitated to getting business from CPAs and financial planners. And some of that was just luck. The, the mentor who brought me into the mortgage business, Mel Samick, you know, when he hired me, he's like, my first job was he gave me the yellow pages and he said, Hey, call all the CPAs and say, Hey, my name is Dave Savage with Excalibur Mortgage. We specialize in helping CPAs and their clients with real estate financing. Do you ever have clients that have a need for real estate financing? So, so part of it was that vertical that Mel put me after. And, and so I wanted to build trust and credibility. Like I wanted to walk into a CPA's office or a financial planner's office. And I wanted to say my advice matters. And I didn't want that to be fluff. I didn't want that to be like, Oh, sure it does. Like, what does that mean? And so just, I think it took me a couple of years to kind of come up with the seed that became mortgage coach was like, I would walk in back in those days, people pick mortgages either from their realtor or the sports page. They're like, Oh, I'm going to call this lender. And, and I used to walk in and say, Hey, CPA, you know, this is how your clients are finding a mortgage and they're basically getting rate payment cash to close. And I had used Excel at the time to create like more data on one Excel spreadsheet. And so it was just, you know, I created it because I wanted to, my advice to make a difference with an intellectual advisor to be like, oh, wow, this kid is sharp. This dude has my client's best interest in mind. And, you know, that was, that was the seed 30 years ago to starting Mortgage Coach. Although I didn't start it. I think I started Mortgage Coach 21 years ago. Wow. That's, that's really cool, man. So this literally started from an idea on a spreadsheet um, yeah. that w- or at one point was a spreadsheet. And so now you've got all of this into, into the system called mortgage coach. Tell me a little bit about that. Cause one of the, one of the cool things I know that obviously not all of our listeners know yet is you've built a really cool community around that too. It's not just a tool. It's not just a piece of software, which is, which is super valuable in and of itself, but you've also built a community about around it. So tell me, can you tell me more about that? Like would that, did yeah. that come naturally or was that part of the vision from the, from the beginning? Well, I guess the natural part, you know, I used to, you know, I've always been a learner and not because I could read well, I'm ADD and dyslexic and I, I don't read well, but I, I, I learned to consume content through, through audio books and, you know, learning that way. And so I always loved masterminding. I'd go to events and I'd mastermind with people. And so I think the concept of we're better together and we learn from our peers was just, that was natural. So that was, that was part of my community story. But when the meltdown came in, I don't know, 2007, 2008, I don't remember exactly what year I started doing interviews and started really focusing on the community. But it, again, had a problem. I was losing lots of users of our software. You know, the industry was imploding. And I'm like, I know I have this great process and this great piece of technology. And then I had attracted a lot of America's most successful loan officers. They were part of our, our user base. The word community wasn't used. And I, I just, I decided, you know what? I am going to start, there's no leadership going on in the mortgage industry right now. You know, it's 2008 and people are like skipping sales meetings. You know, no one wants to go and go, I'm going to create the best sales meeting in the mortgage industry every single Tuesday at nine. And I'm going to interview some, you know, baller, mortgage professional. Uh, I define that as anyone who does over a hundred loans a year. Like they're killing it. Now I interview people that are doing over 300 loans a year. I mean, our community of users, our, our community of loan officers is 34% of loan officers that do over a hundred loans. They're on our team. Wow. But I, I just decided that that was a, um, 
a, a really good way that I could serve the community. And then I had also kind of developed what I call the mortgage coach mission, where I, I really felt like, hey, not only can we make loan officers more successful, but we can reshape how people get into debt. So every Tuesday nine, I'm going to interview someone that's killing it. And some of it is, you know, thought leadership and, and um, personal development. And then, you know, I'm weaving mortgage coach into that. And so it was, it was, that's what it started. And that's why it started. That's awesome, man. I, I love that. Yeah. You've got you, I just, cause I know, I know a few of the um, members of your community, some of the user base, if you will, I mentioned one of them, Todd. Um, but you know, obviously we, we Josh, who is just a monster, Josh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Bill and you and I, like for some reason, our, it's funny, our worlds had, uh, we have, you know, intermingled quite a bit, even before we met each other. And so, yeah, I know some of the people that you, that you are working with there and, and yeah, it's a, that's a group of some serious big thinkers and big producers. And that's, I think that's so cool. It, it speaks to probably who you are as a leader, not just the product. I know that the product is great because I've seen, I've seen what it does and I've seen how it's helped people. But like the fact that you get these folks that are such high producers to kind of come in, give back to everybody else and grow themselves, I think says a lot to your leadership as, as the front, as, as the front end and the face of mortgage coach. Um, I think that's been pretty cool. L let me ask you this, like what's been the biggest surprise for you in growing mortgage coach, both, I guess, take that for what at face value there. When I say that, whatever that means to you, what's, yeah, what's been your yeah. biggest surprise? Well, I, I, I think the pain of change, you know, getting people to adopt new ways of thinking and new ways of operating. I mean, I consider that, one of my top jobs as leader of mortgage coach is to drive adoption of, you know, technology. And it, it does cease to amaze me where someone is really disciplined, super smart, super successful. And they'll look at like, you know, mortgage coach, are like, that's better than what I'm doing. I'm going to do that. And just how hard it is to get on the other side of that change of technology. It, it always surprises me. Now I, it doesn't surprise me anymore because I've been doing this for so long and driving um, digital adoption of, of advice. But it, it, it is it, the, the pain of change. Just little changes are hard, especially when people are super successful. You know, like what they're doing is working and, and to get to that next step of better, it's just, it's just hard, you know. But we're, you know, chopping wood, you know, one, one day at a time, one top producer at a time. And then, of course, you know, we're bringing in lots of great companies to the whole mortgage coach mission. You know, it's, um, you just said something that, something that I've thought about recently. Um, I think just because some of the, some of the friends I have and some of the things I've witnessed uh, in the business over the last year or so is, you know, people who are, who are really successful, right? They're, so they're doing their things and so they, they, they don't change. And sometimes people wait until they have to change to change. Right. At that point, it's often, you know, in a business wise fatal for them to, to wait until they have to change. Um, and I think that is probably one of the things with the way things are adapting, you know, both on the technology side and just the way business is handled these days. That's one of the deadliest things you can do is just sit around and kind of do things the way you've done them because they're working. Um, at least from, from my standpoint, I mean, are you witnessing that too? Am I, do you think I'm off base when I say that? Oh, not at all. Not at all. But I, I do think, you know, we're, I don't know when you're posting this, but I don't know if it's 28 days that I've been under quarantine, 33 days, but you know, here's, here's what I do know. I, or here's what I believe, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll know as we go on the other side of this, I believe that the 30 days of quarantine has changed customer experience and expectations forever. Like, like I remember when Steve Jobs, because I'm a techie, when he launched this iPhone and he showed it from stage and I knew that I wanted one because I'm that, oh, new technology. I got to have that. I think I probably watched that presentation live. Uh, but, but that's all I knew is I wanted it. I didn't know that the world had changed. And it took us about five years to go, whoa, that thing changed the world. And a decade later, I mean, this, you know, I mean, we're talking about a once in a hundred year change in humanity uh, that the iPhone created. But I think with the quarantine 
and now that grandma and grandpa knows what Zoom is and, and likes it. And I, and I think, uh, you know, just how long it's going to take to get back to where people can meet face to face. It's like things have shifted. And, and I, I think we've got at least a decade of digital adoption in this 30, 30 day period of time. Like, so there, a lot of shift has been forced on humanity. And uh, I mean, it's obviously really dark the way it's happened. And, I, you know, my heart just goes out to every small business owner, every service provider, and everybody that's, you know, getting hurt from this. But I also believe that it, you know, on the other side of this, we're going to leverage technology more efficiently, more effectively. And there's, you know, there's going to be some good that comes from all this. Yeah, I got to agree. I hadn't thought about the um, kind of probably a decade's worth of adoption in the last 30 days. But when you say that, like that just sounds, it sounds right. Like it sounds true. That's it feel, I shouldn't say sounds, it feels right. Um, because it's what, you know, it's definitely what I've experienced as well. It's been interesting to see, especially some of my peers who are maybe not as great on the techno technology side who I, I was joking at the beginning. This was like, you'd think that they, they thought zoom was invented last week and they think that right. it might go away in 30 days when they get to go back to their office. Um, but yeah, like things are, things have changed forever. What are, okay. So you're around so many top producers right now. You're obviously, you're one of them in your own respect as well. Like what are you seeing the best of the best that you're, that you're in business with and in relationship with, what do you see them doing right now to not only handle what's going on? Cause we are recording this. It's April 23rd. Uh, this won't be more than a couple of weeks before I release it, but what are you seeing them to do right now from a business standpoint, as well as a, I'll call it positioning for the next six months to a couple of years as we go through this change? Well, so I would, I would tell you in the past 10 days, I have interviewed five realtors that do over a hundred sales a year. And a couple of the people that were on one of the things we're doing over 200, one was over three and I've interviewed, um, you know, a dozen loan officers and at least half of them were meeting with 80% of their clients. Like, Hey, if it was a first time home buyer, 80% were coming to my office. If you know, that was their, you know, their goal. And today, a hundred percent of their clients are digital. They're, you know, they're using zoom, they're using FaceTime, they're using mortgage coach with their loan officers. So, so I've been interviewing those people and studying them and I'll share some ideas for realtors. I'll share some ideas that I've heard from loan officers for realtors, but you know, first of all, they're, they're using zoom or a competitor of zoom. Uh, they're using bomb bomb or a competitor of bomb bomb. Uh, I'm seeing a huge acceleration in the use of text video. So, I mean, that's been a good idea all year. Just guys, just go to your phone, go to text and connect, you know, record. And, and, and again, you know, people think of video is, Oh, I'm going to do a show. You know, it's like, I've got to do a skit and a show and I've got to be entertaining. No, guys, video is just, it could just be a 30 second voice memo where you're, you're, you're connecting. So, so, so there's that. Uh, I had a uh, Glenn bill, realtor Glenn bill. I did 125 units uh, or sides. Uh, and I've had him on a couple of our interviews lately and he's advocating this, you know, town hall meeting with all your customers. So, you know, realtors, doing a zoom town hall meeting, which I think is super slick. And I've only talked to a few agents that have done it. Uh, I've a couple of the agents were talking about how they're starting Facebook groups for their clients. Uh, super smart. Uh, you know, I think everybody is getting on the digital game. You know, they're creating more social media content than ever. I would say that's been a mixed bag. You know, like I think, you know, between the webinar wars and everybody's competing for leadership, you know, there's, there's some great leadership and then there's some noise. Uh, so, so I'm going to like on my thought, I'm going to close with the most important interview I've done over the past two, three weeks was I interviewed Dr. JJ Peterson and Dr. JJ Peterson is the uh, co-author of marketing made simple with Donald Miller, the author of story brand. And he's also, so they co-authored that book. He works for Donald. He's chief of training and he's also, they do a podcast together, you know, called Story Brand, which to me, this was the number one most important thing. And that's like, get our messaging simple. Like my takeaway from that interview, and I wrote an article on it, it's on LinkedIn, was that most realtors and loan officers, they're always thinking about how do I differentiate and 
you know, kind of coming up with gimmicks and things because you know, you know how to differentiate? Make your message clear and show transparency. Like clarity is the ultimate differentiator and transparency, you know, is one of the ultimate ways to create clarity. So, so to me, that was like, oh my gosh, holy shit. I gotta, I got, I'm, I'm like working on that right now. My team and I are going through story brand boot camps, and we're just, we're trying to tell our story in a way that's more clear to the consumer. And, and that's my message to loan officers and realtors. We use a lot of acronyms. We talk a lot of shop talk. Uh, another big takeaway to the real estate industry that I get from Donald Miller is, you know, the theme of the book is be the guide, don't be the hero. And I see so many realtors and so many mortgage professionals go, I'm the hero. I close this many deals. I sell this much home. And I think there's a way and a time to say that, but I think we're going to kill it for those that are like, you know what? I'm the guide. My customer's the hero. And how can I create messaging and content that's clear, like a fifth grader could read it, that, that, that tells that story, you know? So I think to me, those are the, those are some things I've got clear on and things, takeaways from some interviews over the past couple of weeks. So you just said something, uh, be the guide, not the hero. It, I had not thought of it in those words before. Um, but as an example, one of the things I've, I've taught our agents on our team, and I learned it from a friend slash mentor of mine is from a negotiation standpoint is to never say the word, my client, my buyer, my seller. We always say, I always say, the buyer, the seller. So there's no, there is none of that hero complex. Like I'm not trying to do something for them because I just think it's the best thing for them. And so I'm going to save the day by getting them that extra thousand or refusing to, for us to do that, you know, that repair or, or whatever, like the silly things I think that we can do when we insert ourselves into a transaction as the hero, as the hero rather than the guide. So um, that really stuck with me. Thank you for sharing that. Well, uh, well, that's a good example. And I would push every realtor and any loan officers listening to this. I want you to create some content around some of your success stories, some of the clients that they, they came to you thinking one thing, and then you helped them buy a home. They built wealth and you just have this family. Like instead of you, you got a picture of this family and you have a few bullet points on, you know, now, now at the end of the day, because you were the guide, you helped them get the home, they created this wealth. Tell those stories. Make your customers the hero in your local market and, and less pictures of ourselves. Anyway, just my opinion. Um, I, I just think that that's a, that's a way forward. You know, like I think every loan officer and realtor that's a local referral-based professional, we, if, you, if you are messaging well, and then you, you got to play the game, you got to create videos, you got to tell stories you could become the most well-known realtor. You could become the most well-known loan officer in your local market. And, 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 and don't do it because you're the hero. Do it because, hey, I helped this family do this and I helped this family do that. And, and those are the stories that I would push. You know, that's what we push our community to do. That's, I mean, that's huge. I mean, if you think about it too, um, tie back to what Gary Vee is always saying, which is just be the host of the party. You don't have to be the star of the party. Be the host of the party. Um, and I, th I think that's what you're saying. Be, be the guide, not the hero. I, I and those aren't that. my words. Yeah. And those are, I got that from Donald Miller. That's a central theme in his book. So I don't want to, I don't think story brand, that was story brand. That's the book. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, well, I've heard nothing but great things. It's on my audible list to download. I have not yet, but it's, uh, maybe I'll move that one up a couple notches because. Well, I, the new book is marketing made simple by Donald and Dr. JJ. And I think, I like that a little better because okay. it's, it's like four hours and it's, it's not only giving you the ideas, it's giving, it's like you watch it four hours. It's like a workshop. I mean, story brand's great, but I, I just, I think marketing made simple is just a little tighter and it's the same content, same, same author. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Are you cool? If I, if I hit you with some rapid fire type of questions that are out Bring of it. my field. Awesome. Bring it. Favorite punk rock band ever. Oh my gosh. Um, and you can give me a list of like your top three or five because I could never narrow it down to one or two. Yeah. Well, I, I go, you know, like TSOL was local in our market and I saw them at house parties back in the day. So I really like them. But I mean, I, 
I really like, like, believe it or not, you too used to be a punk band. Like people are like, oh, that's mainstream. But I mean, that's one of my four favorite bands of all times. So I've been to all their concerts. To me, it's like, you know, a religious experience going to see those guys. I mean, NXS used to be not punk, but they were kind of edgy back in the day. Oh, yeah. One of my all time favorite 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 songs you know and mostly like when i look back at the you know the early day punk scene you know i really don't like those those a lot of those albums anymore and um i love nirvana i mean they completely changed the game uh still remember the first time i saw you know a, a nirvana video and just was like my mind is blown uh so those are a couple that's awesome man I love that. Uh, you, you caught me a little by surprise there too. I thought with the SoCal roots, there might be a little more of the, what I call skate punk and, or, sur, or surf, surf punk there. I, all my buddies love those guys, but those were not my favorites. Like I hung with that and went to those gigs, but yeah, you know, Black Flag, you know, I, I, I was the darker, edgier punk was not my gig. Nice. Um, cool. So let's move the on. Vandals. To the Vandals. Yeah. Um, I've seen them live, uh, once or twice at a, at a show. I've seen them live a couple of times too. Pretty good. They're pretty cool. Um, all right. Top three pieces of advice for kicking ass. So just in general, it could be life, business, parenting, you know, whatever top three pieces of advice for kicking ass. Well, first and foremost, you know, I think empathy and self-awareness is the core of everything. Uh, a book that's been given to me countless times. I didn't read it till last year but I read it five times last year because I was like, this is important as a father, this is important as a husband, this is important as a businessman, this is the four agreements. And, and I, I felt like I was doing pretty good, but I, I could do a lot better. And so I, I think, you know, that is without question, the most important thing to set success is, is, you know, being grounded yourself. Don't take anything personally, you know, don't make assumptions use your words impeccably or be impeccable with your words. So the four agreements and everything in that I, to me is just such an important, be a good human book and, and, and concept winning by noon. You know, one of the reasons why, and I love Todd books fan for countless reasons, but he founded win by noon and I, I try to win by noon and I have, you know, my whole life, even before I heard that term, uh, you know, early to rise, early to bed and win by noon. And I try to embrace that with my kids, you know, to, to win by noon, you know, check out winbynoon.com, everybody. Yes, uh, it's a great planner for mortgage and real estate professionals, but it's, it's just a great way to live life. And then, you know, the two words, like if I was ever to get a tattoo, you know, I know whether I would say it or not, it's just, you know, always grateful, always curious. You know, I liked, I think there's a picture that I have on some social media where I'm standing like this with, a Sharpie, you know, always curious, always grateful. And, and that's just, I think, the, the place I always try to go. And I'm not always there. Sometimes I need to work harder to be grateful. But, but that's, to me, you know, the bullseye of life. You're living a, a heart of gratefulness. You just, good things will happen. Yeah, I love that. That's great advice. Uh, by the way, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. So um, the next three questions I, I'm going to ask you are just absolutely questions I've ripped off from Tim Ferriss, who's my favorite interviewer. Um, he is, uh, I've just learned, learned a lot on. So I'm, I'm gonna hit you with three more rap, rapid fire. Tell me, um, cause I know you're the gadget guy too, like me. I think one of the things we've connected over, tell me the purchase you've made in the last, call it 12 to 24 months, hundred bucks or less. That's made the biggest impact in your life. Well, it's a little more than a hundred bucks, but this little bad boy, you know, the, the new AirPods. Yeah. Dig them. It's my yeah. favorite. It's so funny. Boom. I remember when the first original AirPods came out, I, I, I didn't want to buy them. I, in fact, I prevented my wife from buying them for me because I was like, that is too expensive for headphones. Uh, like, I, I was like, no way. And then I got them anyways because I had a bunch of gift cards, so they were free. So I justified it that way. And then I was like, this is the best thing ever. And then I just ordered these and I was like, oh my gosh, these are as right? better than the other ones than the original ones were to wired headphones. Like, couldn't believe it. Yeah, no, it's like, if you don't have an iPhone, it's a good reason to get an iPhone. I mean, the quality of the sound, the quality of the mic, the hands-free, boom. I didn't even have to hesitate on that one. Yeah, I love that. Um, something, I'm gonna let you answer these in any order you wish. Um, 
something in the last year or two you have changed your mind on and something that, what are you most excited about right now? Well, I, I, I'm really excited about the, the massive digital shift that's taken place. The fact that uh, I think there's been a decade worth of digital shift. I've always been, you know, a technology entrepreneur and adoption of technology has always been hard. And, and so I'm just super pumped that people know what Zoom is. People understand that a digital connection, doing video, doing Zoom, I'm just fired up that that society is getting there and I think it will be good for humanity in the long run. Uh, so that's, that's important. Something I've changed my mind on. I don't know. I don't know if I've changed my mind, but it's something that I think a lot about. And I, I've definitely changed my mind multiple times. It's just that, you know, social media and what a, what a, what a, you know, like if you would have talked to me a while ago, I'd be like, Oh, it's the ultimate CRM. It's just the ultimate, uh, way to build brands to communicate and you know everybody it's like oh it's noise oh it's busy oh it's hurting humanity I'm like come on set aside uh, I mean I've definitely become more self-aware that there is a time to consume and a time not and and I've definitely become more aware that I need to you know create more boundaries around my consumption of media and and, and so there's just a lot of awareness that we as human beings, and me personally, as a human being, needs to create. And so I, I, I definitely see it as a um, double-edged, you know, super positive if you're creating and you're using it strategically. But yeah, it's super distracting to productivity. It's, you know, it can hurt your sleep. Like, you know, this is probably my favorite investment in the past, uh, I don't know, four months. Because I, I always thought like I am a ninja sleeper. You know, I, I'm thoughtful about it. I'm strategic about it. And I'm like, oh, I'm not getting enough deep sleep. Like, that's a problem. And I, I'm pretty sure it's because I'm not doing a digital sunset. And I'm not, you know, I'm going right from, you know, consuming content of some sort to bed. And so that's been awakening to me, you know. And uh, I don't know, long answer, but that's what came to mind. Love that. I could, by the way, I could geek out on the aura ring and the, the sleep stuff, Stu. If you haven't yet, man, you talked about the digital sunset, but um, I know not always a possibility because you're, you're in Portland, but the other thing I've found that impacts my sleep the most positively is even just five minutes outside in the morning in the sun and the sunshine um, with as much skin exposure to it as possible. So depending on where you live and what your backyard, so naked, naked in the backyard, baby. If you, if you, if I could get away with it, you know, not to, you know, usually, usually just in a pair of shorts in the backyard for a few minutes every single morning. And because you can measure it with the aura ring, um, I can tell you right now, unequivocally, the days that that happens. And if there is a, if I actually take the time to go outside and watch the sunset in the evening, it's unequivocal. I could just show you the charts on my aura ring app. Like it's, it's ridiculous the amount of REM and deep sleep and how much better it gets. So, so, so let me make sure I got this. Cause I'm, by the way, I'm game on. So naked in the backyard for five minutes, first thing in the morning or with some shorts on, we'll see what my wife, how, how that rolls. And, and then, and then at night I am, uh, what am I doing at night again? If you could actually get your eyes on without glasses. Oh, by the, so, oh. Glasses go watch off, the sunset. Go, go watch wa the sunset. literally watch the sunset. Um, I'll, so I've got a friend of mine um, who is is uh, he is an expert when it comes to this stuff. And we just got on the phone and started talking about this. And he presented me with that idea of kind of the bookends of the day. Now, like I had been sold on the sun on sun exposure for a couple of years now, but he he sold me on this idea of these bookends. I'll send he let me record the call. I'll forward it to you. Bring it. I just want it. listen. It is it's pretty phenomenal. Um, and it'll, it'll change your sleep, which will change your life. So, well, and, 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 and that could be like for people that aren't sleeping enough, like the number one priority. I know as I've gotten older, you know, my energy has always, I've just always been a very hyper high energy human, but as I get older, I can't take it for as granted as much. And sleep is, is just something that I, you know, I study and I make sure that I happen. So any ideas to improve my sleep? I'm on it. So thank you for that. Absolutely. All right, man, before we wrap up uh, for this session, um, what's something about you I should have asked that I haven't? <laughs> I don't know, man. 
I don't know. You asked a lot of questions that I didn't see coming. So uh, good. I can't think of a question. I'll think of it like in a minute after we get done with this. Most people like let me, to make... Let me ask you a quick question. What are Go your, for what are your, what are your favorite rock bands or your favorite punk bands? You sound to be a guy that knows. You know, so I'm a little all over the board when it comes to when it when it comes to music. Um, if I had but to, I said narrow, punk. I said punk. Yeah, if I said punk or or, so or new new age. You know, yeah, I'm a little more on the like the lighter side of punk. So uh, my favorite band ever is is probably kind of a pop punk band called Unwritten Law from San Diego, Southern California. Not not very big, but by far my favorite band. Incubus is up there as well. They are, this is awesome. you know, way they used to be really super funky. Um, AFI for sure has been up there for me um, as one of my favorite bands. They're a little more of the hardcore punk, but or at least they used to be um, one of my favorites. Goldfinger is always fun to listen to. Less Than Jake is always fun to listen to. And then probably one of my other favorites, um, almost ska, but Real Big Fish, kind of almost like pop ska, pop punk. Real Big Fish has been one of my favorites. So do you, do you listen to music every day? I mean, is that like an oh, important yeah. part of your oh, yeah. mood? Oh, yeah. So... So I, I went and did a site visit with Jeremy Forcier, just complete baller. By the way, like he's the one that first, well, the founder, Todd Bookspan, turned me on to the Super Nice Club, but Jeremy is like a Super Nice Club freak. Anyways, like one of his most important things to his mood is just, you know, having music on all the time, you know, and uh, such a great, great reminder. So one question you didn't ask me that you should, uh, just because I want to shine a light on Super Nice Club, you know, Dave, why are you wearing the Super Nice Club shirt? And I, I got the idea, what's the, the new show? It's called Something, Some Good News. Have you watched that, that show, Some Good News? No. Yeah, ch- check it out. I'll forward you a link afterwards. It's the guy who's Jack Ryan, you know, Jack Ryan on Prime. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so he, he just came up with this out of his own home. It looks like he's self-funding it. And he's just doing like this 15, 20 minute weekly, uh, some good news, you know, just good things happen in the world. And so um, I'm going to, I don't know if I'm going to do it once, I'm going to do it five times, but on Fridays, I'm going to start celebrating super nice people in the mortgage space doing super nice things for their local economy. So uh, for all you realtors, you know, one, go to superniceclub.com. I don't have any equity. I don't have any interest in it. But to me, I think in the mortgage and real estate space, we are making money. We are, we have jobs. In the mortgage space, we're, we're having record-breaking months. And, you know, I think we could play that back in our local communities, you know, give big tips, prepay service providers. And so um, I'm going to start doing Super Nice Club Fridays for as long as I'm, I'm feeling like it's needed. That's awesome, man. I, I love that. So you said superniceclub.com? Yeah, that's the website to check it out. Cool. We'll put that in the show notes too and, and make sure everyone goes there. Uh, Dave, this has been an absolute pleasure, my man. I appreciate your time. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to share with us about uh, yourself and the mortgage coach and some of the cool stuff you got going on and and the community. Cool. Well, let's do a virtual view. This one. Did you hit it? You got it. Right on, bro. Take care. All right, bro. Thank you. All right, guys. We will talk to you soon. Have a great day.